Hey there, this is Michael with ImageEyes.com and uh, today I'm just going to tell you about this uh, studio setup we got. Um, so hopefully it can teach you a couple of tricks about shooting your own 360 views. Um, so what we got here is uh, a nice little setup we got. Um, when I take a shot, the nice thing about it is that it leaves us with a perfectly white background. Um, and uh, a nice little reflection on the bottom, um, which is cool because that means you don't have to actually do any editing with this one. You just crop it and do a little bit of color balance and that's about it. Um, so to do this, it takes a little bit of work and setup, but um, I'm gonna show you how it's done. Um, so let's check out this table. Um, so the table that we're using for this is, uh, pretty clear kind of plexi, or it's not a clear plexiglass, it's more of like a kind of an opaque plexi, and uh, as you can see, um, it's not all the way see-through, but uh, yeah, so we're using that, and we're using an automated 360 turntable, homemade, haha, <laughs> and uh, we got a nice little uh, softbox in the back, um, so let's show you how the whole lighting setup works. Um, so we're using four lights. Um, we got two for lighting the subject. Um, what we're using are Alien B B800s cranked up almost to full power. Getting pretty close. And uh, we're using 40 degree honeycomb grids. And that way we're able to really focus the light directly on the product without um, over lighting the rest of the stage. Um, and uh, yeah, so we got that and that. And then <clears throat> for aligning the product, we use this cool trick. Um, I cut out some poster board and there's a little rectangle in the center that I cut out. I've got some lines to have some nice uh, reference points. And we got a little rectangle here, another one over there. And I put a really, really, really small piece of tape on the actual turntable itself. And that way, I'm able to actually put this on the table, line it up with the tape, and that way we'll know pretty much that we'll have the product um, really aligned in the center of the table. And it works really, really well. So yeah, as you can see here, let's get a better view at it. Um, yeah, we got the tape right there. And you won't be able to see it in the photo you won't be able to, because um, the lights are so bright. Um, but you'll be able to see it right now when you want to light it up. So, get one there, and one here, and just double check. We already got this one aligned, so should be good to go. Um, one thing, though, you want to note is whenever you're doing a shoe, or, yeah, shoes are a good example, um, you always want to make sure that the product is um, nice and aligned so that um, front to back, side to side, it's a pretty much equal distance. But if you have to have, if you have to choose, it's really good to actually have the product just a little bit forward, um, a little bit off center, facing forward, just a little bit, not much, um, because then that way it looks like the shoe's kind of rotating in a forward direction. Um, if it's back a little bit like this, it kind of looks a little funky, and when it rotates in the spin. Um, it'll actually kind of feel like it's following its rear end backwards. It's kind of a weird feeling. Um, so um, best to just keep it perfectly centered, if anything, just a little bit forward, and you should be good to go. So there's that. Um, take this guy off, and now we got a perfectly centered uh, product on the table. Um, the other way is lasers. Lasers are pretty cool, but um, this time we're just using Plain Jane, simple, doesn't run out of batteries, poster board. There it is. Um, we got the rear lights. Uh, using a little stand right here to hold up another Alien Bees B800. And what do we got the power set to on this guy? Uh, about 1 8th, a little bit past 1 8th. Um, we don't need a lot for the backlight. Um, but for this guy, we use a big old B. 1600 and we have this at about half power um, and that's about right for this setting 
and we're using barn doors. And that way we're able to kind of direct the light that hits the paper background. This guy. And uh, we got a little piece cut off for a little project we did earlier. No, no harm damage. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so let's uh, check out the camera settings real quick. And then we should be good to go to shoot this thing. So camera settings. We got the uh, oh, battery's low. Um, we got the aperture set at fourteen hundred. Um, shutter speed set at one sixty. Uh, one sixty, one twenty five, anywhere around there is good if you're using strobe lights. Um, white balance. We have that set to fifty seven hundred K. Yep. And uh, color space is always at sRGB. Um, and uh, yeah, should be good to go. Uh, anything else? Oh, yes. Um, whenever you're shooting, always make sure that you have image stabilization turned off. If you have it turned on while you're shooting 360 views of products, um, it's definitely going to make the uh, product kind of float. Maybe even I can hopefully do an example and see if we can get it to do its thing. Um, and maybe you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'll try to hold this video camera as still as I can. And maybe you're able to see it kind of float just a little bit. Are you able to see that? Hopefully. If not, no worries. But um, you'll be able to definitely see it if you look in there. Um, with this video camera, it might be too low resolution to notice. Um, what this will do is this will actually make the product kind of float around very slightly um, in the rotation. And when it goes from the first frame and then goes back to the last frame kind of it'll it won't look seamless it might be off center a little bit so it might jump um, and that would suck so don't do that and to prevent that from happening turn that off um, for the lens we got a uh, 24 to 105 f4 um, L glass it's a image stabilization by Canon I love it works great for this kind of stuff um, and then the camera we got is uh, Canon 5D, yep, old school one. But it works great because for web, you don't really need to have super duper duper high resolution images. Plus when you get to that high of a resolution, it actually starts to slow your computer down. So you gotta have a nice big computer to handle those really high res images. Um, but for this, it's perfect. So there it is. Um, let's do some photography now. Um, got a little switch here and uh, once we press this button down, it should start doing its magic. So, here we go. And that should be 20 frames. And let's see how it turned out. The last little test video we did, the images were all blurry, so hopefully this time I did it right. Cool, very cool. Looks like it turned out good. Um, it might look video, uh, a little blurry on the video, um, but that's okay. It's just because the video I'm holding is a little too close to the camera. Um, so it looks like it might be blurry in this video, but. It's actually, when I'm looking at it, it's really, really clear. Um, wow, it looks like they turn out really good. Cool. Nice and centered, and uh, nice detail. You'll notice that it's a little bit off-center, um, so what I'll have to do is rotate the shoe a little bit and then make it perfectly dead on. I'd probably reshoot it. And then, uh, yeah, from here it's nice because all the, you don't really need to do any editing to remove the background. Um, so it should be good to go as is. Just crop it to 2500 by 1875 pixels, upload it to imageis.com, and uh, should be good to go.